Iowa, a state that literally has more pigs than people, where the fields of corn and soybeans stretch farther than the eyes can see. Nestled in those fields are towns that are uniquely Iowa, home to local businesses that have been passed down from generation to generation. Towns that are the definition of community. Towns that people grow to love so much that they never leave or find themselves returning to. Offering a glimpse into the history and culture of the region, we will show you a few of the towns that are not just surviving, but thriving. Explore with us between the cornfields, beyond the hustling and bustling cities, to the small towns hiding away. Welcome to Waverly. My name is Brady Wheeler, and I'd like to show you around some of the best parts of Waverly and talk with a few of its residents. Check it out. Waverly was first settled in 1850. It all started out as a dirt road going right down the middle of downtown Waverly. It has been growing ever since. My name is Adam Hoffman and I am Waverly's 51st mayor. I became mayor on January 2nd of 2020 after running a campaign in 2019 and I'm in my second term. What makes Waverly stand out or thrive? Our community stands out and thrives on several different things. We've got great outdoor spaces through our parks with our leisure services program. Our school district is, you know, growing and thriving in the, in the manner that it's a, a respected school district. We have a lot of open enrollment. We have Wartburg College on, in our community that is a, a focal point for, you know, aspiring um, people that want to learn and get careers. In your opinion, what are some of the best locations in Waverly? Some of the best locations in Waverly that I really truly appreciate is our parks and open space. We've got several parks that also offer a Frisbee golf course. We have a traditional golf course. Um, we have got the river access for boating, kayaking, fishing, all those types of activities. But we can't dismiss the, the wonderful uh, you know, venue that Wartburg College presents itself as well. What do you like best about towns this size? Towns of this size of about that 10,000 um, census, there's a uh, it's a great mix of different personalities, cultures, um, be it age as well. Our school district has you know, fairly decent sized classes where you get younger families that are having those kids go through school. We've also got Wartburg College that has you know, aspiring uh, people that are continuing their education that come to our community from all over the world. So that's, that's some of the things that I really like to see um, in a community this size and I appreciate. Is there anything you'd like to say before I go? I really appreciate the, the fact that individuals uh, identify Waverly as a, a growing uh, community um, just up the road from a you know, major metropolis uh, in our state and we're not, we're not forgotten about. Uh, we are obviously seen as an opportunistic community and it's always a pleasure to, to provide a, a different insight and viewpoint to uh, individuals like yourself. As the mayor has stated, Whitburg College truly is important to the town of Waverly, and it has been around for a long time. On another note, Waverly even has its very own hydroelectric plant. It was established in the 1880s, and it still produces power to this day. Uh, my name is Jordan David, and I am the head golf professional at the Waverly Municipal Golf Course. How long has this business been in Waverly? Uh, this business was uh, cr created in 1929. Uh, it's certainly been developed an awful lot since then. What does your business offer to Waverly? The business offers uh, recreation, I guess I would say. Uh, especially important over the last few years, especially when COVID uh, came through, uh, we exploded a little bit by having an outdoor recreational safe activity to do. Um, and, and like you said, we have been doing since 1929 in Waverly, so. What about Waverly makes your business thrive? Uh, the municipality of it, you know, truly it's a business that's open to everybody. Um, sometimes in the golf world, uh, golf courses can be a little bit stuffy, can turn people away. Um, I don't think we've got that at our facility. I think this is truly a place that is open and available to, to everybody.
A few more outdoor activities include a dog park, brand new baseball diamonds, a soccer complex, and so much more. My name's Connie Yonda. Um, I like the small, smallness of Waverly, yet it's big enough to have everything that we need right here in town. What is your favorite thing to do in Waverly? One of our favorite things, especially during the summer, is when they have Revive, which is the Christian concert here in town. It's kind of associated with the fair, but that's one of our fun things because there's fun things for the kids to do. The adults can kind of relax, and it's just a fun family event. In your experience, how would you describe the culture here in Waverly? Um, that is a hard one, but we kind of have a diverse culture-ish, I would say, with Wartburg in town. Um, it's a safe culture, which is nice. We don't have to worry too much about um, our kids playing with other kids in the neighborhood and that sort of thing. So I, I would say it's a safe culture. Another unique location in Waverly is the Sub City Restaurant, which used to be a train station years ago. It is one of my personal favorite restaurants in Waverly. My name is Jennifer Peters, and the thing I mo like most about Waverly is the community events and things that I can be involved in. In your opinion, what town event is the best one in Waverly? Uh, Oktoberfest, which is usually in September. <laughs> Are there any final words about Waverly you'd like to share to the people watching? Uh, overall, I, I love Waverly. I've loved it for a long time. Um, and with the river and the various events and things that you know, you can immerse yourself in and get involved. Um, I think it's a great town to be a part of. Something that I can't forget to mention is the brand new Bremer Brewing Company. It has become extremely popular and they are growing every day. My name is Dawn Stover and the, one of the things I like most about Waverly is the smell of Nestle floating through the air. I always tease that it's like living in Wonka land. In your opinion, what town event is the best one in Waverly? Uh, I really like the county fair. I enjoy the music acts and just the, the atmosphere and the smells and kids and watching everybody do what they do and the chickens. The chickens are very important. Are there any final words about Waverly you'd like to share to the people watching? Um, I think Waverly is a wonderful community. I enjoy the people here and being a community with outdoor things like the rail trail and the nice parks and just, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful community to live in. It's clean and I would recommend anybody moving to look at Waverly. Now that you know what Waverly is all about, I'd like to say that growing up here is actually great and I'd recommend coming to Waverly for your next mini adventure. All right, next up on the tour is a small town called Grundy Center. I, Berlin Kloss, will be your guide to all the things that Grundy Center has to offer. Grundy Center is a unique uh, little community. Um, the people of this town um, make a really concerted effort when they do something to do it extremely well. Um, there's no, let's do it cheap and and do it again, and let's do it right the first time, and then we'll be, then it's good for good, and uh, good for a long time. So, we've got a, a very positive, active economy um, in town. Um, it's become a, a little bit of a shopping hub, uh, and uh, a little more of a destination uh, arrival instead of just a pass-through. Um, uh, we have a wonderful hospital. Uh, it's rated uh, in the top 3% in the country. Um, and our school system is top notch. Um, uh, we've got some good solid industry here in town, so it's, uh, it's, it's a very good community and very solid economically. I've never lived in a small town, so this was a totally new experience for me. Um, I've lived in Atlanta, Chicago, Oklahoma City. So moving from Waterloo to a smaller town like this, because our population is about 2,800 here, was, was an adjustment. But my daughter and her husband and my four grandkids are here. So that made it much easier because now I'm just like literally next door to them. 
I wouldn't have had that if I were in any other part of the state or the country. So that's really worth the move and the change and the just the adjustment. Well, um, you know, I would say that I started five years ago and in the midst of COVID, my husband had a stroke and was not able to work for about nine months and the community really rallied to make sure I could stay afloat and um, supported us in all sorts of different ways. And I think that is one of the reasons I'm still here. And you know, a lot of places didn't survive through COVID, but I was very, very supported during that time. So I've just continued to grow since day one. I've, I have yet to take a dip in sales. So um, I'm really, really blessed to be part of just such a great community, which is why I haven't really found another place to expand yet. Um, people ask me all the time if I'd like to start another coffee shop, but I don't know. If, I don't know. I haven't found that community yet that feels right to me. I mean, there's lots of great communities out there, but this this is just good for now, and it's it's really growing at the rate that is all I can handle right now. Um, well, we have a really good school district. We have um, big soccer fields and baseball diamonds. We have some nice baseball diamonds, and we have a variety of parks plus different activities to do in this town, like the movie theater, or the bowling alley. A Norman Rockwell painting. Friendly, welcoming, um, and supportive. Happy, local, caring. Positive. It's two words, but hardworking. I really, uh, not necessarily a story, but um, I did a little uh, video piece for our, our community a while back. And um, the comment I made, or that I ended with, was I have literally gone around the world and I have looked for another Grundy Center, and I have yet to find it. Um, it's, a, it's just a unique um, attitude and atmosphere. It's, uh, it, I, I can think of no better place to live. Hello, I'm Garrett Barnes, and welcome to Reedland, Iowa. Located in Northeast Iowa, this small beloved town is home to 857 people and one old grump. Established in 1904, Reedland has been a steadily growing community, rich with history. Reedland has grown street after street since it was born and now it has a select group of small businesses running in its core. Although Main Street is being renovated at the moment, this small town's bar is still running full swing. Grumpy's, a clear homage to the town's mascot, has really put this town on the map. I think that Grumpy's has put Reedland on the map. It's brought everybody from all across the state into our community and they've really enjoyed coming here and are, you know, it's just putting Greenland on the map. Yeah, I think it's bringing a lot of people to this community that normally wouldn't come here and they're getting to just see like how loving and friendly we all are and it's become a family. And coming into this community six months ago, I was, didn't know how I would be treated. It's, it's kind of mind blowing for me. Everyone treats you like family once you get to know everybody. It's really a very nice, close knit community and I feel like I'm welcomed. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and customers the same. You're gonna feel that when you're here. You get to know people. And, yeah. With Grumpy's, Main Street's seen its most parked cars on the street since the 90s. Reedland holds four churches along with two elementary schools for your children. The locals couldn't agree more that this town is a great place to start and raise a family. Well, Reedland to me means small town living. Reedland means to me uh, just quality small town living at its best. Well, it's all about community service. And to me, it's not about uh, somebody's got a job and got to do it. Uh, it's about uh, looking out for the citizens of Reedland and doing what we think is best for them. I was born and raised here, and I knew from the time that I left to go to college that I wanted to come back and raise a family here just because of the community itself and the, the members that are involved in the community. It means knowing who your neighbors are. It means relying on your neighbors in, in certain circumstances. It means uh, talking to your neighbors. You take a lot of pride in them. 
try and be good stewards of the, our neighbor. It's a community service is what being mayor is all about and, and having the gratitude of that. And looking out for one another and, and freedom. It's, we're free to do whatever we want. We're not constrained by big city rules. But freedom means, uh, Reedland means to me, freedom. You had to describe the town of Reedland in three words. Be best small town. I grew up on a farm north of town, but I've always gone to school here and I've lived in my current home for 50 years. Uh, we're 50 miles from anything in any direction, any bigger town. And so it's hard to get businesses here. We're in the middle of nowhere, really. The town doesn't grow a lot for that reason, but um, I think that's what's made our town unique. Uh, it's a great place for children. It's beautiful. We have the river running right through town. And so no matter where you go in Iowa Falls, there's always something really pretty to look at. It's pretty flat, but still, because it's a small town, and so there's a lot of community feeling, and, and uh, you know your neighbors for the most part. And people get along, I think, pretty well here. We hadn't necessarily planned on staying in Iowa, but we kind of looked around and we just, there were lots of parts of Iowa that we hadn't been in and we just kind of took a two week trip, kind of toured around. Hadn't planned on buying a restaurant that was already established, but this place was just really neat. We moved here to buy the restaurant. And the Princess has been here for over 100 years. At first I was kind of unsure of the name The Princess, but it has a really neat story behind it. It's the name of the ship the original owners immigrated to the new world, you know, many years ago. It's just a, the largest, remaining soda fountain in the U.S. thought to be in the world, which is pretty amazing. Supposedly Walt Disney offered to buy just the soda fountain years ago. He wanted it for a, for a movie set, but they wouldn't sell without selling the whole business. President Eisenhower thanked the original owners for having dinner in here. So President Eisenhower has actually been in here and had dinner, which I think that's amazing. There was an actress years ago that worked here. Her staging was Madge Meredith, and she was from Iowa Falls, worked here when she was younger. Well, she went on to be famous and worked with Marilyn Monroe. She came back for the, the 40th anniversary, and uh, Marilyn Monroe sent like a telegraph saying she was upset that she didn't get invited to the party. I grew up in Iowa Falls. I went to elementary school here. I went to high school and I went for two years to junior college at Ellsworth. So I was lived in Iowa Falls till I was 18 before I went on to UNI. I lived in Dallas-Fort Worth area for 30 years and um, they don't understand anything about a small town in the Midwest. My thing is when I come back, every year I came back, I didn't want anything to change because I love my hometown so much so I like it all to stay the same. So there have been a few changes. Um, in our places of beauty that have kind of disappeared and I hate to see that. So Iowa Falls is a scenic city, it's a beautiful place and I want it to keep all of its beauty so I just don't want it to change at all. I liked living in Dallas-Fort Worth, I liked lots of things to do, I liked the cultural things but I also got really really tired of if you had to run to the grocery store to pick up one thing you forgot it would take you an hour. Um, it just, uh, it's a slower pace, you have your neighbors, you know everybody, your teachers are here, your people are here, it's just my place. This is Elma, Iowa, a little slice of heaven where the town bell rings at 6 p.m. and its people thrive on their strong sense of community. Elma is unique. I've been here since uh, 1968, so the whistle blows at seven in the morning, noon and six, you know, so you know your kids are. Everybody knows everybody. Just ask somebody that, oh yeah, you know, they know. 
Now, I've only been here, like I said, a little over seven years, and I know most of the people, and I, I wouldn't give it up. With a population of approximately 500 citizens, it's a charming little place where everyone is your neighbor and you will find a helping hand around every corner. We are an inclusive community that works together with everybody. We're 505 people. This community sticks together. I mean, they work, they get a project. Everyone gets involved in it. It's not just a few people. For a small town, you gotta do that if you're gonna survive. Otherwise, you are not gonna make it. Though the town may be small, there are plenty of activities in the community to enjoy. Oh, definitely the Bluebird. It brings a lot of people in. We have a brand new daycare here that's been going and expanded. We have a new library. We have a community center that's full kitchen. Town 500 with a clinic, it's open five days a week. Like five golf courses within a half an hour. Best locker in the state. And people come from all over there. We have, uh, they have groceries. What's not to like? If you're not chatting it up at the Elma Express gas station, you can fill your belly with a good meal at the Bluebird restaurant. Take a stroll over the wooden bridge on Main Street and much, much more. I bought the gas station, it would be two years ago this month. Over there, uh, I work a lot of the shifts also, but it's just seeing the regulars that come in. Just because you have a bond with most of them and you know, figure out what they have going on in their life. And so that's nice. And over here, it's kind of the same way. So people just come in and hang out. For the small town that it is, uh, we have a big heart and it's just an amazing community. Elma is truly unique, small in size, but mighty with heart, soul, and hardworking people who grind hard on the weekdays and play even harder on Saturday evenings. It's just a nice place. We look out for each other and it's just a friendly family atmosphere. So it's a good place to live. If you've never been to a small town, you need to come to Alma because everything's here you need. If you want to live in a small town, this would be the town to come to because we got it. It's no wonder this town is thriving. It's safe to say when that town bell rings at 6 p.m., everyone here feels safe and where they belong, right here at home in Elma, Iowa. This is Spillville, Iowa, home to the Czechoslovakia pioneers. The town was founded in 1860 by German folk that grew into a refuge for Czechs. It was also the hometown to famous clock workers Frank and Joseph Billy, in which who are known as the Billy Clock Brothers. The Abili brothers lived on a farm outside of town, and in 1913, in their, when they were in their 30s, they decided to go ahead and uh, get into clocks, clock making. We don't know why, but they were inspired, and so they started with smaller clocks, graduated to larger ones, and the museum was out at their house. And for many years, people would come out uh, to, even famous people would come out to their clocks, sometimes a thousand people a day. And then in 1943, uh, about when they were in their 60s, it, it, the clocks came to this building. So with the history from Anton Dvorak, it was a nice match. Not only was Spillville, Iowa a home to the Billy Clock Brothers, but it also became a res residential town to Czech composer Antonin Dvorak. Antonin Dvorak spent the summer of 1893 composing strings music for the town some of which are called Himazordok, E Major Quintet, Songs for Motherhood, and the New World Symphony. Anton Dvorak, the composer from the Czech Republic, uh, he had lived here with his family, which was uh, seven, eight people upstairs in our museum. So this was their home only for the summer because he worked in New York and came here to, with his children because there was a Czech community and uh, it was a place for him to come and relax when he couldn't get home to his native country. In today's society, music is still a huge part of this town. Spillville has been known to holding lots of concerts for genres of music such as heavy metal, country rock, and rock and roll. The Billy Clocks Museum and the Antoine Dvorak exhibit still stands to this day. A uh, primarily Czech town, we have one of the oldest Czech schools in the 
if not the oldest in the country. Um, oh, I forget the year the church was born, or born, was built. It was, uh, it's a beautiful old church if you ever have a chance to go look at it. Um, there is a lot of the, the altars there and, and the iron crosses, those were all by local artisans mm -hmm. and, and it's just a nice small town to live in. <laughs> There's a lot of weddings pretty much all summer long. There's weddings here and dances and uh, we have a lot of live music on our stage that we built on the park. It's, uh, it's just a small town. I mean, you gotta, you gotta create your own fun, I guess. <laughs> After years of hand carving wood and composing creative art has really paid off. Welcome to LaPorte City, Iowa. With a population of just over 2,200 residents and the town being just over a mile and a half long, the quarters are close, but the community and people are even closer. Um, how long have you lived here? All my life. Small towns are a great place if you're a kid because you can you can go anywhere on your bike. You can you know hang out with your friends and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to live in a small town. Since I've been the clerk for um, almost 13 years. Though Laporte City does not have many businesses, they do have one business that has been here for over 10 years: Tootsie's, the ice cream shop. We have some long established businesses, but it's it's hard for retail uh, businesses to make it work because Waterloo is so close. Residents of Laporte love the small town community, and though Laporte City will never be an industrial town, and they do support many businesses in Waterloo by providing their workers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, service businesses, insurance, uh, barber shops the local service providers, phone company, utilities. Mm -hmm. You know, they have offices here and they always will because their customers are here, but as far as retail, it's that's a, that's a mm -hmm. challenge. Everybody knows you, it's like I said, that's the best and the worst, everybody knows, especially if you've lived here all your life. Um, people have known me all my life and they, you know, so, but it's a good thing. You know, we were able to make Main Street walkable, ADA compliant walkable from the city parking lot five blocks down. We also added, um, the trail that goes behind the fire station and it connects to the Cedar Valley Nature Trail. I think it's important to give people not only the, you know, the basics that they need like, you know, trash pickup and, you know, plowing the snow. I think you need to give them community and you need to provide them with these kind of places to gather so that they can become, because mm -hmm. otherwise people don't. People are pretty isolated these days. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to work, they come home, they go to work, they come home. So if there's not these opportunities, then they never get to know their neighbors, and especially if you're new to a community. So mm -hmm. I think that's important. The town's museum and history was very interesting. It had lots of artifacts ranging all the way back to the 1800s. Their main exhibit, though, was about electricity. I'm standing in front of the LaPorte City Golf Court, where the LaPorte City members and community came together to purchase this location. Years ago, the golf course was owned by the board, which was all of the members, and then they sold to an individual who did a lot of improvements, did wonderful things out there, um, but then his health declined. Um, a couple of local attorneys in town and a couple members of the city council who got together and um, started raising money and they raised enough money to buy it. So it is member owned again. They have a board and, and this is their first year uh, operating it. Like I said, small towns are a great place to raise your kids. When I was younger, the term bedroom community was kind of frowned upon. You know, it was like that wasn't a good thing, but it's like, it is a good thing for us. We're close enough to Waterloo. We supply the, you know, the workers, the employer, the employees for a lot of businesses in Waterloo. Mm -hmm but they want to live in a small town and they have that option. It's, it's a 10 minute drive from the south side of Waterloo. So um, I think we're in a good position for that. We're never going to have large industry here, but you know, we can, if we can continue to provide our residents with the amenities they want, the services they need, they're going to continue to live here and, and raise their kids here.